lover that has OCD. Obsessive canning delight. I can a lot of varieties. But French onion soup is what I fill my pantry up with the most. And I'm here to convince you to start doing the same. French onion soup is such a time saver because it makes almost anything taste better. It lends a richer taste to meats, vegetables, and gravies with just a few humble, inexpensive ingredients that lend filling flavor. I'll take you step by step through the recipe in just a minute, but first, let me support the claim I made about this being a highly versatile ingredient by showing you ways that you'll use your home canned French onion soup at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let's start with French onion soup for breakfast. Y'all, this probably goes against all rules of civility, but on brisk fall and winter mornings, a bowl of French onion soup hits the spot. The nutrients from the beef bone broth, onions, broiled cheese, and bread that's seasoned with garlic and layered with ooey gooey Swiss and Gaillard cheese never disappoints. Using the ends of baguettes or frozen sourdough bread to make a, well, I just call it a breakfast bread quiche, tastes way more complicated than it is to make. Combine your soup, eggs, bread, and a few herbs to bake and you'll end up with a filling crowd pleaser. Now here are some delicious lunch ideas that will soon be your favorites. Combining your canning ingredients with a crock pot is kitchen bliss, and y'all, this is a pulled pork sandwich that beats what you'll find in a restaurant any day. After browning your pork, transition it to the crock pot and add apple cider vinegar, ketchup, this is my homemade fermented recipe, uh, brown sugar, and your French onion soup. Set it and forget it for a few hours, but when the smells draw you back to the kitchen, whew, you'll have tender meat on your hands. I pulled a can of homemade coleslaw, slathered pan-seared buttered buns with homemade mayo, and assembled. Oh my goodness, this is so good. There's so much flavor in this. You gotta try it. Whether you freeze the leftovers or keep it in the fridge for a few days like I am, this meat is so flavorful and tender, it won't last very long. One pan bourbon and bacon braised chicken thighs makes at least a monthly appearance on our menu. If I had you at bourbon and bacon, please know that it's the French onion soup that really pulls everything together. This lunch or dinner recipe is super easy, and when you add the French onion soup with the noodles, they soak up all that flavor, so don't even bother with seasonings or salt. I'll recommend now that you should make this in batches and freeze it because your family will love this recipe. You're gonna love using your jars of French onion soup at dinner too. I had to save this recipe until the end because it's dangerously delicious. By that I mean it's comfort food at its best. I'm using ground turkey, but when you add cheese and fresh herbs to make meatballs that you'll simmer in French onion soup, <laughs> please no, only great things will happen. Let's be shameless and add mashed potatoes with heavy cream, homemade butter, and leave the skins on for texture and nutrients. If you need a stick to your ribs kind of meal, y'all, this is it. Y'all, those are just a few meal ideas because, well, I've got to get a move on showing you how easy it is to pressure can this recipe. But if this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving your own ingredients right at home and show you ways to use your home can pantry and meals your family will love. Now it's time to get to the recipe and canning steps, but don't worry about writing anything down. The link to the printable recipe is below. I also have a link to where you can get the full blog post, which includes the recipe, videos, pictures, and and much more straight to your inbox even before I post a video. Now, this is strictly the recipe where I go a bit more into depth about things. It's not a newsletter. Oh, you'll also see me in a couple of minutes when I come back to talk about canning safety, some recipe tips, and a few other things. Now, let's get to canning your French onion soup. Start with firm and smooth onions and cut them into a quarter inch slices, airing on the side of thicker. If you have pre-sliced frozen onions, you can use those too. Now I'm pulling my scrap bin out of the fridge, which hooks right onto a kitchen drawer to conveniently catch the skins and ends of onions. I never throw these away because I'll freeze them until I have enough to make stocks. 
Onion skins add color, flavor, and are rich in vitamin A, C, E, and numerous antioxidants. Heat a bit of butter or olive oil in a stainless steel or heavy bottom enamel Dutch oven over medium heat. Add your onions, a bit of salt and pepper, and then you'll cover and cook for 30 minutes and up to an hour until your onions are very tender. Remember to stir occasionally. Next, remove the lid and stir in your dried thyme and white wine, being sure to stir up the brown bits from the bottom of your pan. While we want our French onion soup to be delicious, it also needs to be safe. As such, this is why all the canning recipes I use are sourced from approved canning authorities like the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the National Center for Home Food Preservation, and companies like Ball and Bernardin. The recipe that I'm sharing with you today is one that I adapted for one of my go-to canning books. The all new Ball Book of Canning and Preserving. This recipe book and all the canning tools that you see me use are in the description box below. All right, so I'm gonna be looking down at a few of my recipe notes. First this, this recipe is delicious, but if you're looking for an authentic by the book French recipe, this ain't it. But that's only because I tweak two little things. First is that I use a combination of onions. So red, yellow, and white. I also combine beef broth with chicken stock. Authentic French onion soup is made exclusively with yellow onions and only with beef broth. But in my home, I'm gonna cook with what's on hand or what's in season and darn it, sometimes I'm gonna toss in a purple onion. Plus, I really do prefer that medley of onion flavors in each spoonful. And this is just my taste buds, but sometimes I find the deep beefy and roast flavor from a beef broth is just a bit too much when also paired with onion. So this is why I choose to cut the beef broth with a chicken stock, which gives it a milder and more nuanced flavor. All right, so on to our next tip. It can take up to 30 minutes to caramelize onions the right way. And yes, I mean right way because there is a wrong way to do it. You want your onions bronzed and beautiful, not bitter and burnt. So here's what you need to do. So first start by setting your burner to medium heat and then dump the onions in and then hit them with a little bit of salt just to draw out the moisture. Your onions will first get soft then juicy and then start to brown and the browning is really what makes them sweet and delicious. Here's another thing you should absolutely adjust the heat as necessary so that the onion layers caramelize at a steady pace. The layers of your onion should gradually move from tender and translucent to a deep golden brown. Here's another tip when you go to slice your onions be sure to do so from stem to root and you want to slice a quarter of an inch thick but absolutely err on the side of thicker. You want to do this so that your onions keep their shape during cooking. Also avoid slicing crosswise because they fall apart just way too easily. Another thing to do which I did in this recipe is to use beef bone broth for added nutrients but if you have a store beef bone broth that you prefer go ahead and use that too. Now when it comes to the wine that you add if you really want the best flavor it's ideal to use a wine that you would actually drink. It's your choice. Now you may be wondering can you make this in a crock pot and the answer is a hundred percent yes. Just make sure that you caramelize your onions on the stove top first. So in this recipe, I substituted soy sauce with liquid aminos. And truly all, it does taste like a mild soy sauce. It still has that salty, savory flavor, but with the benefit of aminos. Liquid aminos are proven safe to use interchangeably with soy sauce, so you're good to go if that's your preference as well. Those are all the recipe tips I have for now. Be sure to check out the coordinating blog post. Now let's get back to canning our French onion soup on the stove. Just before all the wine evaporates, stir in broth and bring to a boil, then simmer for 15 minutes. If using, add Worcestershire sauce and liquid aminos to deepen the flavor. After that, ladle your French onion soup into hot jars, leaving one inch of headspace, and use a debubbler to remove any air bubbles. Wipe your jar rims with vinegar to remove any residue that may prevent a seal and apply a new lid secured with a band until it's fingertip tight. Place a jar rack in a pressure canner containing two inches of simmering water. Secure the lid on the canner, ensuring that it's in a locked position. Adjust the heat to medium high and vent steam for 10 minutes. Then place the counterweight or weighted gauge on the vent and bring pressure to 10 pounds for a weighted gauge canner or 11 pounds for a dial gauge canner. 
Process one pint jars for 60 minutes or one quart jars for one hour and 15 minutes. When the canner has cooled, remove the jars and let them sit for 12 to 24 hours before checking the seals and storing. Don't forget to click the link to start getting candy recipes and meal ideas straight to your inbox. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.